Hey friends, attorney Kyle Newman here to discuss how car accident claims work, and I'll take you through some of the most important steps to take after an accident. And of course, if you have any questions about anything I cover here, just leave me a message or reach out to my firm directly. All right, let's go. But first, let's do a collective slam on that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm can spread this lawyerly love to more people who need it right after an accident. All right, so maybe you were driving, maybe you're a passenger, maybe you're on a bicycle or a scooter or you're a pedestrian walking along the street and boom, you're in an accident, what now? Have no fear, Kyle is here. Look, car accidents are a scary, unexpected thing and depending on how bad the collision was, you might be seriously hurt. The airbags might have gone off, you may be in the middle of a busy road or in a place that's unfamiliar to you. And even though the adrenaline is gonna be pumping, you may be in shock, dazed, hell, you might be knocked out, the most important thing to do after an accident is to stay calm. Everyone reacts differently to accidents, but the absolute worst thing to do is to lose your temper. Look, this was an accident, people make mistakes. And even if you did absolutely nothing wrong, don't ever get out of the car and start screaming and yelling and fighting with the other driver. It can only harm you and your potential case. Instead, focus on gathering yourself and make sure there's no life-threatening injuries to either you or the passengers in the car. And if there's any smoke or fire or leaking fluid coming from the car, get out of the vehicle as quickly as possible and keep a safe distance away. And after a collision, drivers will have the instinct to move their car out of the way, to back up, maybe pull over. Don't do it. You want the cars in the same position as they were when the police arrived. So just put that puppy in park and shut off the engine. Of course, the next thing to do is to call 911 so you can get the cops and an ambulance to the scene. And when speaking to the dispatcher, remain calm. If possible, have the location of the accident ready with either the street name or the nearest address. Speak clearly and calmly. And once the police do arrive, they'll ask for a description of the accident. And if you were hurt, complain about everything bothering you. And don't worry about getting the accident report at the scene, it usually takes at least a week for the police to prepare it and then it can be picked up from the precinct later. When it comes to police and medical personnel, watch what you say. Never admit to any wrongdoing and if you're unsure about specifics about how the accident happened, don't guess, just say, I don't know. And if the other driver approaches you, ask them for their information, things like their phone number, their license and insurance information, and never admit fault to anyone at the scene of the accident. This also goes without saying, but take as many pictures of the accident scene on your phone as you can, including damage to the vehicles, the roadway where it happened, and anything else that you think is relevant to that accident. And when you do take photos, try to make them as clear as possible. Don't zoom in or zoom out too close. And look, whether you leave the scene of the accident in an ambulance or not, if you're feeling pain anywhere, make sure to seek medical attention right away. Don't be a hero and try to toughen it out because if you are hurt, the longer you wait to see a doctor, the more it will impact your case. And don't worry about the cost of doctors, hospitals, or the ambulance. In New York, under the no-fault insurance law, that means the insurance of the vehicle you were in or the vehicle that hit you if you were a pedestrian is going to pay for your medicals regardless of who's to blame. Next up, and look, you can do this from the scene, from the hospital, or at home later, call your insurance company and report the accident. They're gonna give you something called a claim number and the information from the insurance adjuster who's going to be handling your case and also things like you know property damage, tows, rental vehicles, they can help you out with all of that. And while we're on the topic of insurance, here's a big warning. Do not ever speak to the insurance company of the other vehicle involved. Don't ever sign paperwork for them or accept money from them to settle your case. This is a tactic that these companies will use to try to rip people off and trap them into taking a ridiculously small amount of money. And once you sign a release, you won't ever have the chance to get that money back again for that accident. And look, you knew this was coming, but get yourself an accident lawyer and don't wait, okay? Do it as quickly as possible. Look. 
There's no hard feelings if you don't hire me. Just make sure to find someone who specializes in personal injury, the practices in your area, and when you get them on the phone, you feel comfortable with them after speaking. Unfortunately, in this business, there are shady characters. There may be people who approach you in the hospital or call you out of the blue, maybe come out at the accident scene asking you to sign papers with a lawyer you never met. This is a scam, and any firm that engages in this behavior is bad news, so stay away. And look, if you need help finding a lawyer outside of New York, just hit me up. I work with some of the best attorneys around the country. And one of the best reasons to get a lawyer is so they not you can deal with all the tedious, annoying stuff like filing the correct paperwork and dealing with insurance adjusters and getting your bills paid and the million other things that we do to not only set up your case and maximize your recovery, but to help you get back on your feet, getting your wages taken care of, things like getting your car repaired and set up with the best doctors to help treat your injuries. And when it comes to accident settlements, Every case is gonna be different, so don't listen to your crazy aunt who said she got three million bucks for breaking her pinky. Listen to your lawyer. Accident lawyers like us, we work on contingency fee, meaning the more for you, the more for us. So we're always trying to get you the most possible. And just like how the value of cases varies from case to case, so does the time it takes to get your case resolved, which also depends on a variety of factors, such as how severe the injuries are, the insurance coverage of the at-fault party, and the venue of the case. And while some cases do settle early, unfortunately, most insurance companies won't cough up the dough until we put the case into suit and go through at least some of the court process, which can take anywhere from one to three years on average. Look, at the end of the day, accidents are a huge inconvenience for you, the client, so let the lawyers do the heavy lifting so you can focus on your recovery and hopefully getting back on your feet as quickly as possible. All right, this is Kyle, and I'm out of here. See you on the next one.